well, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at uh, CFDS.com. Your uh, leading, or shall we say, specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage. Be sure to visit the website www.cfds.com to certainly learn more. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site www.cfds.education to uh, certainly uh, keep up to date with my latest charts and analysis. Okay, uh, end of day European market analysis for the Tuesday, the uh, uh, 15th of March 2016. Let's uh, try and interpret exactly what happened today and the chronological events leading up to the uh, price action that, that resulted in European markets being negative. Now, the main reasons for the uh, negative outcome, uh, number one, Antofagasta, okay, potential cut in dividend and uh, obviously profits declining in excess of 60%, therefore that's obviously negative for the mining sector. Okay, and that sent the uh, European markets down to a large extent. We also had concerns with regards to the Euro USD, obviously being around that 1.1 and lack of rate cuts, obviously from the ECB now. And uh, given the fact that that in in and of itself, given the fact that the uh, Euro USD or the exchange rate is the leading uh, harbinger of uh, potential uh, exports and job creation, etc., uh, obviously, that was a risk of tone from there straight away, immediately, shall we say. Uh, well, we had oil prices down quite considerably as well uh, today. We had a pivot low of $36 on oil, currently residing at 36.3. So commodities certainly coming under pressure. We also had lack of stimulus from the BOJ overnight and uh, a concern with regards to growth projections going forward. And that certainly, uh, obviously, uh, certainly, bit, well, European stocks certainly bore the brunt of that in terms of risk aversion, okay? So BAJ downgrades the economic outlook and blames the emerging markets for the weakness. So that isn't going to help the FTSE 100 in any way at all. We also had Volkswagen facing a 3.6 billion lawsuit uh, from customers itself. So again, that's certainly negative for especially German DAX. And that certainly bore the pressure from there. Obviously, we had the Asian markets down overnight as well. And uh, we had Valiant uh, towards the afternoon down almost in excess of 45%, which is a pharmaceutical company which again added uh, even more bearish sentiment and uh, pressure on the uh, the actual equity market itself okay so main reason lack of BAG st boj stimulus and fear of uh, the fed obviously going into tomorrow okay given the fact that they are going to be hawkish and that certainly is uh, a potential negative tone on commodities and that's why we're seeing weakness in the european session okay so that's the uh, list of uh, fundamentals now in terms of economic data uh, from Europe, there was more more or less non-existent was an inflation data that wasn't really of any major concern. Uh, we did have employment change, so a stronger employment data out of the uh, Eurozone. That's certainly net-net bullish. Uh, in terms of the US data, we had uh, overall the economic data was okay. Uh, retail sales didn't actually come in as bad as everybody expected. Uh, only came in at minus 0.1%. Okay. Uh, New York Empire State coming in stronger. PPI <coughs> slightly stronger. Um, or more or less in line on a year on year basis, stronger, but month on month. As of late, certainly weaker. We had red book sales coming slightly weaker. Business inventories slightly better in uh, for much sense, but we had the housing and AHB housing market index more or less in line. We had the dairy auction that certainly came out negative, so that should certainly put even more or exert even more pressure on commodities on the downside. So overall, US data more or less in line supports the. Uh, the Fed hawkish stance going into tomorrow from my perspective. Okay, right, let's see where the markets are technically speaking. Before I do, always uh, looking at the euro and uh, looking at the um, the bonds as always. Okay, so euro USD resistance obviously is at this 1.12 uh, level. So whenever we reach that, there's a risk on in uh, equities and vice versa. Okay, so risk off in equities. Uh, so we say risk on in equity, risk on in equities when we reach 1.12, and risk off in equities when we reach that 1.108. So we certainly seem to be oscillating between those two zones at this more current juncture. Whether which way we break out will obviously depend on the uh, Federal Reserve, the Fed itself. Okay. Okay. So Euro USD, uh, provided we hold this 1.1120 level, the uh, the uh, market certainly will hold on to potential support. Uh, but as soon as we break through there, okay, you are looking at risk aversion immediately, okay? So again, that's certainly some food for thought as well, okay, going forward. In terms of the bonds, let's bring up the bonds. Let's see exactly where the bonds are positioned. Euro bond, okay. The euro bonds at the moment currently coming into support. Okay, that's not here. Uh, so euro bonds itself, let's just bring this up, okay. So 
we obviously held resistance there euro bonds coming into support so that should technically support the equity market so again that's certainly some food for thought as well going forward in terms of uh, going into tomorrow i mean we've obviously broken that support level there if we do could continue further if i go to a four hour chart german bonds then you do have that 200 ma that needs to be potentially tagged as well so watch out for that 200 ma and un unfilled gap below as well and that certainly is uh, putting upward pressure on the euro usd currently trading at 1.110 so again, uh, if the bonds were to uh, continue with this H&S formation, uh, you will see a, a sharp rally in the euro, and that will obviously cause risk aversion in uh, in the equity markets as well. So certainly some food for thought there. Okay, so euro USD 1.1120, that's your zone, that's your resistance zone. If we break above there, the bonds will start to crack and flow and fall, and that will obviously trigger risk aversion in, in equities themselves. Okay, right. Okay, now let's uh, bring up the chart of the euro stock. Let's see exactly where we are positioned. Now the euro stocks looks like a classical H&S formation to me, folks. Okay, you have the left shoulder here. The head obviously has gone in there. You're consolidating in the right shoulder. Whether or not we hold that close, that gap is a different story. I did attempt to uh, take that trade today, and that certainly didn't. I certainly had to close out. Okay, currently I am actually long the euro stocks at 3074. I think my average is looking for that gap fill it certainly ha hasn't transpired thus far okay uh, again unfilled gap below 2970 will potentially be the target on the euro stocks okay so certainly take that into consideration now if i just connect the uh, diagonal trend line together you can see that that trend line certainly has held well today so bear in mind uh, h and s formation is in play on the 10 minute on the euro stocks the daily chart on the euro stocks again you're holding that doji candle uh, topping tail certainly has held previous support equals resistance so technically perfect so far 60 minute chart at the moment you haven't put any higher high nor have you tested that previous high so a strong argument for the market to potentially reverse here and reverse lower again you can clearly see that hns which is there 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 and looking for the market to potentially close a gap below so again if the fed is not as hawkish as everybody expects the euro obviously spikes the bonds collapse and the equity market equity market follows suit okay so again, that's going to be very interesting tomorrow, okay? Right, if the uh, Nasdaq certainly crashes here with Valiant obviously under pressure, quite under immense pressure, uh, or should I say the, uh, the sorry, the Eurostock crashes here with Valiant, and other obviously reasons such as the BOJ, lack of stimulus, etc. Then uh, on the Eurostocks, you are looking at a uh, support at 30, 30, 40, that will be an excellent level of support, and then obviously down below. So you are looking at quite a substantial drop. But again, uh, uh, the uh, Fed day certainly has the ability to do that. Okay. German DAX. Let's bring up the DAX. Okay, so DAX certainly are holding that resistance zone in this region. Certainly no real thrust or propeller ha propelled uh, move higher yet. 10-minute chart consolidating. That certainly has held potential here for a double bottom hold and a bounce. But again, with this Volkswagen lawsuit looming, it can certainly hurt the uh, the auto sector. Now, let's just bring up the auto sector whilst we're here because I do have the automobile sector. So you clearly see the automobile sector is probably one of the reasons why the German DAX certainly weak, okay? And it sort of more or less mirrors, more or less mirrors the, uh, the German DAX in and of itself, the uh, DAX automobile sector. You can see here the 60-minute chart has unfilled gap there. You still have an unfilled gap below. So two potential unfilled gaps that need to close, okay? So looking for unfilled gaps close here and potentially thrust lower for the unfilled gap below given the lawsuit that we have, okay? So again, certainly indicating weakness on the banks as well. Uh, the daily chart, you can certainly see there, there is some uh, resistance now on the daily chart as well with regards to the banks. We have not made a, a new higher high. If anything, we've pushed lower. We did potentially attempt to hold this support here and that's already your support zone. If that were to fail, then you do have unfilled uh you do have a gap that needs to be filled below now we did have one of the banks limit down today so again the italian banks certainly feeling the uh, the pinch just feeling the weakness as well so bear that in mind in terms of the banking sector as well okay right so the um, dax retail that's a bring up the dax retail sector as well 60 minute chart you can see you've got a lower high everything certainly seems to be a lower high and then obviously you've got the unfilled gap below so if i just bring up the chart here You've got support, and then obviously an unfilled gap as well. So again, certainly looking to potentially target the downside, okay? Right, going back to the German DAX, unfilled gap below. That gap certainly needs to be targeted, and then obviously you have another gap below at 9,500, but the first gap at the moment is going to be at 9,830. Now, I did expect the uncertainty and the fear to certainly boil over and uh, hurt the uh, the actual uh, 
uh, US markets, which in turn would have sent the European markets low, but that hasn't been the case, so which is pretty impressive thus far. Whether or not that's light volume, that's another different story altogether. Okay, so jumping over to the CAC now, the CAC itself still remains weak. Uh, we are we are consolidating at the moment. Uh, if anything, it's probably the weakest out of all of them. Okay, I have actually got a short position in the CAC just before I declare my position, and I am looking for that potential gap down to close below. So look, it's certainly looking for a, a flush going into the uh, going into tomorrow anyway. Okay. The uncertainty regarding the Fred, etc., etc. So certainly indicating weakness, given the fact that we've held that Fib 75% on the 60-minute chart. Okay, the daily chart, the French CAC. Again, we're still holding that resistance. We have two unfilled, multiple unfilled gaps below. That certainly need to be targeted, and the uh, topping tail on the, on the French CAC certainly has held thus far. Okay, the FTSE 100 now, the last index. So we observe again similar pattern here, folks. Uh, h &S formation. So there's your head. Obviously, as we know, looking for a right shoulder, consolidating here, looking to flush lower. So again, given the fact that the head is the pivot high is being at 6200, you have the neckline around the uh, uh, 6120. So you're looking for an 80 point drop. So you're looking at 6040 on the downside and that coincides with that pivot low here. So that certainly is no coincidence. OK, so certainly looking for weakness on the FTSE 100 as well. 60 minute chart of the FTSE, you clearly have a bull bear flag formation. So you clearly see we, can, we are consolidating here and then obviously looking to flush lower. So classical bear flag formation where the red candle is in control. All the following candlesticks are consolidating in a lower 25 to 50 percent before we get the next flush. OK, certainly indicating weakness. Even on the daily chart of the FTSE is certainly displaying weakness as well. You can clearly see that we are failing to go past that 6 to uh, 10, 6 to 20 zone on the FTSE 100. OK. Uh, now let's bring up the chart of the Nikkei. Let's just see exactly where we are positioned. Certainly indicating weakness in the Nikkei around that 75%, folks. Certainly quite important given the fact that we've got no additional QE now. Uh, certainly is um, no uh, central bank to drive it higher. And don't be surprised to see a, a move lower on the Nikkei itself. Okay. I did expect the uh, S&P 500. Let's just see exactly where that's positioned. Bring up the daily chart. We're still holding that 200 MA. So therefore indicating as a resistance, okay, on the on the on the S&P. I did expect a thrust higher on the uh, recent or decent economic data that came out today out of the US, but that certainly didn't transpire. Now the 60-minute chart on the S&P 500, you're consolidating within that red candle. You're looking for a potential bear flag and then obviously a flush lower. 10-minute chart, again, you're still within that uh, previous support equals resistance zone. Uh, it's very hard for that unfilled gap to close at 2019, so therefore I'm looking for the gap to close below at 1919 instead. So looking for quite a flush going into the FOMC or the Fed meeting itself. Okay, the, the Nasdaq. Let's just see exactly where we are. The Nasdaq again certainly seems to be uh, exhausted now, especially with Valiant concerns. Uh, you are looking at holding that gap level of uh, resistance. There really is no other reason why we we are going to push higher f f further than the gap, given the Asian markets were down overnight. And given the fact that risk FX and commodities are certainly weak as well, so therefore looking for a potential flush lower. Whether or not this is light volume that's distorting the price action, that's a different story altogether. Uh, our job at present is trying to correct the narrative or trying to understand the, the correct narrative and then obviously adjusting our trading accordingly. So again, looking for that gap on, on below to potentially close and previous support equals resistance to hold at 4335. Okie dokie, right, that's the uh, summation of European markets. Watch the euro at 1.120. We break through there on the upside. It will start to signal risk aversion. Uh, also, the bond, we'll keep watching the bond. If we start keep, continue to break down the bond, the yield starts to spike, and that obviously feeds the euro rally as well, which in turn, a stronger euro is negative for European stocks. As we all know, it's a, a risk aversion or, a, or a, 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 a safe haven currency. Now, the euro to a large extent, given the anti-QE nature, uh, whenever the uh, QE start fails, the euro starts to rally, and that obviously causes uh, uh, considerable damage and harm to the uh, equity market. Right, I think that's a wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.